Now, there's a couple of key things you need to do inside your modeling package before you go to baking type substance. Um, first of all, I've, on, this is my high poly. If you select this, you see how dense it is. Um, if you look on the materials I've got on here, I've set a custom material to put a blend on it. And I've called it metal or two, and I've put a bright color on it so that, that I know that that's metal or two. It doesn't matter what color you use. It doesn't matter what you call it either. It's just as long, as long as you know what material and each different material you're going to have in your texture is corresponds to a different material in your high poly. So on this red section here, when I select it, I've got this metal or one on this one. Um, I've got this green one. I've got this is uh, I don't actually really name that yet, but I love that as a plastic or something. Um, and then this is a rubber. So I've got rubber. Um, next thing to worry about is, as you can see in the out, in the uh, outliner here, everything's named. So I've got door one. So if I just quickly open up my low poly, let's see my low poly and the high poly there. Um, the door one is like this door here, the low poly for the door, and then door one is here. So I've got them named the same, except for I've changed the, the suffix to underscore low for the low poly and underscore high for the high poly. Um, it's really important that you do this, the suffix um, so that when you bake, the uh, high poly doesn't get doesn't bleed through onto any co like close geometry. So what happens is the bake would this maybe this pattern here at the side would bake and it would actually maybe transfer it onto the door, which is not what I want. Um, so by naming it, you stop that happening inside the substance um, painter. So inside Substance Painter, I'm just going to come to File, New, um, select the mesh I want to, my low point mesh. Uh, next, make sure this is on DirectX, not OpenGL. Uh, the Compute Tangent Space Per Fragment, you want that ticked on. Um, if, it's for if you're going to be using Unreal Engine 4 with your asset, um, you might as well leave it on. Um, and then the document resolution is obviously how big the document is going to be. Um, if you've got a slow computer, I'd put this down as you're working and then at the end when you're finally done, crank it up to 4K or whatever resolution you're going to be working with. For this demonstration, I'll do it 2K. And then click OK. So here's my asset. I'm just going to quickly remove the background. So if I come over here to the opacity, I can just crank that. It's a bit easier to see what we're doing. Um, next, we go to the big textures button here. Make sure you're in texture set settings and then the big textures. Um, and here is where you're going to be making all your maps. So the common settings where you change the resolution and all that stuff. And all these are the different maps you're going to be using. So by default, let's just turn thickness off. We don't really need any thickness map right now. This is basically just a subsurface scattering type um, map. Uh, we can leave all, everything else on. Uh, we can use these ones to, to help us um, texture later. So if I just come to the ID, this is where the color map gets generated. I'm just going to change this to a material color and then change this one to random. This just takes the high poly materials we put on earlier, those bright colors, and bakes those onto the UVs. And then next, let's come back to common, change the resolution of the textures. So make sure you put these to 4K. If you are, if you do want to uh, put a 4K texture at the end, make sure these are 4K. Um, dilution width, you can leave that, uh, and the prior diffusion, you can leave that ticked on. Um, these are basically about how the map bleeds out um, and the padding. Um, you can obviously, if you get any issues, you can mess around with that, but default settings should be okay. Uh, next, you put the high point model. So we're going to find that. So we've got the high point model here. Uh, cage, if you've got a cage generated for your file, obviously I don't have that. I'm just going to use the uh, default settings down here. And then the max frontal distance and the max rear distance. Now, these two sliders, there's no set rule, like for, there's no set number that works. It's basically every mesh is different. So we'll just leave it default for now. And if you are getting any kind of weird artifacts or aliasing on your no map or anything like that, we can mess around with these settings and slide them up and bake again. It's a really fast baker, so uh, remember that these are the slides you'll be playing around with most to get your perfect bake. Uh, leave everything else default, and then here a match put by a mesh name that basically uses the mesh names we added in Maya earlier um, for baking. Uh, anti aliasing crank that up to 4x4, four four. you can have higher if you want. Uh, and then this is the, names that we, the name is suffix we chose earlier, so underscore high, underscore low, so we can leave that default as well. Obviously change those if you changed it, if you've got a custom naming convention yourself. And then hit bake. Okay, so here's the bake version. Um, you see down here all the maps. They've got bake, normal, wall space, normal ID, etc, etc. Um, you can also come to the textures tab here and actually open up the textures if you need to look at them closely. Um, so I'm just going to look, look around the model quickly, see if there's any issues anywhere. Uh, use shift and right click to move the uh, lighting. 
but no, it looks looks fine to me. So once with this mesh here, I've only imported the sections I want to bake, um, and then once you've done the bake, you can go okay. Any duplicate meshes that basically that you want to that you're using any of the same sections, you can bring those in later. So I'm going to re-import the low point now in its final state, um, and it will, all the maps will be applied to that. So if you come up to here, go edit project configuration. And then basically select a new low poly, so I've got more called complete, and click OK. And now, as you can see, my final low poly is here with the little shelves inside and stuff like that. And I can just double check that everything's great. Now I'm ready to texture. Um, hope this helps, um, and see you soon.